Go ahead. Okay, everyone, you guys, thank you so much for coming today. We are so excited. Um, I'm Ann Marie Leahy and I work in the Career Services Center at Santa Monica College. And I have the privilege today to introduce to you the Mattel team. They've come here to talk about um, the internships that they've created for us for our fall 2021. But I know you didn't come here to listen to me, so I'm just gonna turn it right over to Mattel and let them take it away. Excellent. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie, and thank you, the rest of the team, for joining us today. Um, so before we kick it off, we actually had a little video. I don't know uh, how familiar all of you are with what it might be like to work at Mattel, so we just wanted to share something really quickly first. I went to school for industrial design, definitely wanting to go into toy design. I had the uh, privilege of working at a few different companies before joining Mattel, but Mattel is definitely that ultimate experience. It's the biggest company with the most talented staff. It really is, for me, the most joyful place I have worked at in my career. I work with designers of all different backgrounds, from fashion to graphic. We work with packaging engineers and mechanical engineers, people from all different backgrounds really coming together to solve these problems that is one of the most special things of, about Mattel. I lead design for dolls and in doing that we put the consumer always first and foremost at what we do so we spend a lot of time really understanding that consumer and what he or she is looking for in a toy. We research a lot, we do a lot of focus groups so that we really understand how they wanna play and what they're looking for. And then we have fun and we design and we try to come up with the next best thing that really adds delight to that consumer's life. It's really exceptional. It's so incredible to be yes. part of such Register. an awesome, powerful group of female leaders in Mattel. We absolutely have a terrific mentor program to work amongst these leaders and learn from them and teach you know, upcoming uh, young talent how to succeed at Mattel is really a wonderful experience. I went to school. Perfect. Well, my name is Seema. Uh, so I work at Mattel and I sit on our global talent acquisition team. Uh, specifically, I oversee all of our internship programs, our early talent programs. Um, so I love working with students and I'm really excited to join you here today and uh, share a little bit more about the company and the intern uh, opportunity for the fall. And hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having us this afternoon. My name is Milan Sewell. I'm a part of SEMA's team as the Senior Talent Acquisition Partner and specifically oversee the undergrad internship programs. So I think many of you might be familiar with Mattel. Um, I think some of the brands that you're seeing across here are relatively iconic. Um, we're really excited to be a part of such a portfolio of brands that are super creative and innovative and known all around the world. And we're a big company. We have very broad global reach. Um, our products are in 49 languages. We have 35 offices and we sell product in 150 different countries. So we also really value diversity and inclusion, not only in our products, but in our workforce as well. And you've definitely seen a lot of our products when you head out to Target, which I love to do often, and uh, your Amazon packages. I'm sure you've browsed across and seen our Barbie dream houses everywhere. Um, so it goes to so show that our product is in a lot of different places all over the world, and we have really strong retail partnerships. And that's what makes us uh, part of what makes us the number one global toy company, not only in 2019, but 2020 as well. And I think part of what I enjoy, why I enjoy working here and why I'm sure our designers working, uh, enjoy working here is 65% of our products are new every single year. So that means that there's a lot of creation, uh, creativity, innovation that's constantly happening and it's a fast moving place to work. Uh, we are made up into a category structure. So you can see from here, some of the logos that you may be familiar with from our dolls category. Uh, to action figures, vehicles, construction, we really run the gambit in products and categories that we offer. And that also makes us a social powerhouse. So obviously social media is where it's at right now. So we are the number one toy brand on social. 
uh, number one in dolls and toys vehicles on all different social campaigns. Uh, we have a ton of kid engagement. That's where it's at. Um, if you go on YouTube, if any of you have kids in your lives or if you're an adult collector, you may have seen some of our videos across some of our YouTube pages. And again, also number one for influencer content. And so with that, I think the secret sauce behind all of that is our designers. And so with that, I'm gonna to toss it over to Carlisle. Thank you, Seema. Hi everyone, uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for attending. My name is Carlisle Nuera and I am a lead designer for Barbie Signature. And so Barbie Signature is a segment of the Barbie doll design um, portfolio that's geared towards adult collectors. And then we also have kind of like higher end keepsakes too that are geared towards um, maybe giftable opportunities like we have a birthday wishes line or a you know annual holiday doll party. And to give you a little bit of background, I attended Otis College of Art and Design uh, 10 years ago. So I've been at Mattel for 10 years. Um, I studied fashion design and product design. The reason why I actually studied both is that I actually failed out of the fashion design program. In my junior year, I got a D in the illustration in my illustration class. Um, and I share that just to say like, I know how hard it is to be a student to go to art school. Um, and that, you know, even if you're struggling, like if you continue on, like, look at me now, you know, I'm here giving you a presentation on the other side of the looking glass. So this was actually um, my senior thesis project at Otis and I called it In This Skin. And I wanted to do kind of glamorous interpretations of like myths and realities surrounding weight loss. So like when you lose a lot of weight, you know, oftentimes you have a lot of loose skin left over and oftentimes it's considered a bad thing, something you get surgically removed. But I wanted to do in a beautiful glamorous interpretation of that. So that's what this, these yards and yards of flesh colored jersey are about. And that's actually my younger cousin and my um, parents' empty swimming pool that I shot that at. So I was very much a student, had no budget. So I just paid my cousin in Krispy Kreme in and out. And this was the second outfit in that little collection. And this was kind of about um, interpreting that, that saying, that kind of awful saying that, you know, there's a skinny person inside of all of us, right? But you don't experience the world as that person, you experience the world as you are. So this was having, you know, like a beautiful, bigger tool, fat suit, and then an inner kind of rougher, inner skinny body suit. And I wanted to share with you some of my favorite projects over the last 10 years. Ones that were definitely had a uh, focus on graphics. This was Mutia Barbie, which came out in 2015. And she was part of our global glamour collection, which were all you know, like glamorous over the top interpretations of different countries, national dress. And this was the third doll in the series. The first two were designed by my boss, Linda Shaw. And um, the first one was designed, inspired by Kenya. The second one was designed, inspired by Italy. And I had the opportunity to design the third doll. So of course I took it to, you know, my background, my culture, my ethnicity, the Philippines. Um, and yeah, I wanted to put her in a traditional terno with the butterfly sleeves. Um, next slide, please. And the print on that organza terno, you know, was, I worked with a graphic designer to create this intricate block print that if you can see that little sun, that's the sun from the Philippine flag. And some of the patterns and textures are just inspired by different um, tribal textiles from different tribes in the Philippines as well. Next slide. And then, you know, graphic design isn't just flat graphics. Sometimes it translates to something more three-dimensional. So these, this was done by um, the graphic designer and it was, you know, an engineered embroidery pattern for the hem of the terno inspired by the Sampaguita, which is a jasmine flower that's the national flower of the Philippines. So, you know, graphics, you know, translate sometimes into something else, not just a flat graphic printed. This is another line that I was proud of that was very graphic heavy. It was, it's called the BMR 1959 collection. And it was a concept that I came up with and I wanted to design a line of dolls wearing streetwear as if it was a real streetwear brand. So, you know, a cohesive color palette and, you know, using logo play in all different forms and different silhouettes. And this is what the dolls ended up looking like. So these are available now if you're interested in purchasing these. <laughs> Another one of my favorite products that I've ever worked on was the Basquiat Barbie, which came out um, in April of last year. So Basquiat's you know, digital archive is managed by this a licensing partner named Artstar and they gave us access 
to all of Basquiat's works that have been digitally scanned in high quality. So, you know, taking into account the time that Basquiat lived and worked and also what he wore a lot, he wore a lot of big oversized suits. So I wanted to put Barbie in like a big 80s oversized suit, but have each panel of the suit with a, with a different piece of his art. And you can see on the left, that's my sketch and kind of my work cited page with each um, name and year of every one of the arts, art, pieces of work that he did. So, you know, looking at each panel, like for the back of the suit, like I had this big canvas, so I wanted to put that kind of, that skull and along each arm, it's more of like a longer piece. So I wanted to place, you know, some of his art that had like a longer, more vertical figure in it. So taking into account like the shape of each pattern piece and seeing what um, work of art of his would fit the best. This is another doll that I designed birthday wishes in 2019. So every year we have this beautiful kind of giftable birthday Barbie that you, know, you can gift to a special person in your life. And this one, I wanted to do a floral print. And so in particular, the graphic designer that I worked with, we were taking into account printing on a sheer fabric and taking into account what, you know, how the colors might look, they maybe need to be more saturated, um, maybe how they would bleed on this particular fabric. This is another doll that I worked on that came out um, earlier this year in February, and it was of Dr. Maya Angelou, the legendary author. And this was such an amazing project to work on um, because I got to speak with um, Guy Johnson, who is Dr. Angelou's son and his wife. And I got to hear him over the phone, like in his voice that sounds just like his mom's, you know, talk about memories of his mother and what it was like. And he actually specifically um, wanted this print. He referenced, if you look in the, um, can you go to the next slide, please? So on this page, he referenced this photo specifically and um, clothes that his mother had custom made in West Africa and this Ankara print that we recreated for the doll. And um, of course, the doll had to come with the mini book of I Know Why the Cage Word Sings, her famous novel um, autobiography. Um, I was inspired by the original cover art with these kind of warm sunset tones, but we actually couldn't locate the original um, artist and therefore um, secure the rights to recreate this, the original cover art. So I did something inspired by it and I worked with a graphic designer to, you know, scale it down to a tiny Barbie sized book and make sure it had um, like the clarity and you could still read it and read that it was recognizable and said, I know why the cage bird sings. And then with this product, I wanted to show you kind of briefly how we um, like our design process. So we start with a sketch and we sketch out everything that comes with the box. As a Barbie designer, I'm responsible for designing the hair, face paint, face sculpt, body type that we use and any clothes or accessories that the doll might come with. And then from there, we spec it out. So we're specifying every single Pantone color every single fabric, every single stitch color. Um, we're referencing previous toy numbers for, you know, oh, use the shoe from this doll, use the sunglasses from this doll. And then from there, a graphic designer would work on the fabric art, um, taking into account scale. So oftentimes what we do is that, you know, the graphic designer will work on a print and they'll print it out on paper and just kind of loosely drape it on a Barbie doll to see that, um, that the scale of the pattern works or not. And yeah, this is what the sketch looked like and the final product. So I think any successful product is one that looks just like, that you get everything that you want, that it looks just like your initial sketch. This is another um, Barbie fashion pack that I worked on recently. So if you um, aren't aware, you know, there's different Barbie body types now, which is really an amazing thing. So what we like to do in Barbie is do clothes that we that are called universal fit that will fit a range of body types. So that's why you can see a range of silhouettes here, things that are maybe looser, more oversized, so that um, it can fit any you know petite, tall, curvy Barbie. Sometimes even can. And this is one of the latest projects that I worked on. So if you don't know who Dapper Dan and Dan is, he's a legendary fashion designer, and he basically invented logo play. So we worked with him for these one-of-a-kind dolls for our um, Barbie style Instagram channel, kind of taking 
his iconic looks over the years and reinterpreting them for today with updated silhouettes and um, color palettes. And I actually worked on this project. The graphic designer on this project was Jindei Smith, who you will be hearing from next. Hello, everyone. How is everybody doing? My name is Jindei Smith, and I am now lead graphic designer at Mattel. Um, and Simi is my manager. You'll be hearing from her um, soon. So a little bit about me. I'm from Oakland, California, originally. Um, I love fashion growing up. Like, that was my thing, fashion. I would do my little sketches. I was saying, I told my mom, I think when we visited New York when I was 12 years old, she told me this, that I was going to move to New York. I was going to work in the fashion industry. I was going to have my own business, all of that. So fashion was always my thing growing up. Um, so my, my goal was to go to the San Francisco Academy of Art, study fashion design, all of that. But my dad had a different idea in mind. He was a professor at Howard University and he said, you're going to Howard University. So I went to Howard University and it was a, an amazing decision. Obviously I loved it. Um, I studied fashion merchandising because they didn't have a fashion design program um, at Howard. So after graduating from Howard, I actually moved to New York and I worked in the fashion industry. I worked in buying, I worked in uh, product development, I worked in retail. Um, I also worked as an assistant personal shopper at Saks Fifth Avenue. So I did a lot in the fashion industry, but I decided it wasn't, what I was doing wasn't for me and I really wanted to do something more creative, but I'll get back to that a little bit later. Um, on this page, it just shows a little bit about me personally. I love traveling. There's a picture of me. I got married in Costa Rica. Um, there's my family, my husband, who I actually met at Howard, and my son, Koa. I also am a dog and cat mom, so I have uh, a dog and a cat, and they're frenemies, but sometimes we get cute pictures like that of them. Um, I love art. I love design. This is a picture of me at LACMA. I'm so happy that things are opening back up so I can be inspired um, I've been going, trying to go to all the museums. Um, I love reading also. So if you ever need a recommendation, I'm an avid reader, so holler at me. I also love working out. That's a picture of me by my Peloton. And I love nature. So if I can combine working out with nature, yeah, I'm your girl. Like I love hiking, I love climbing mountains. That was a picture of me in Yosemite right after I um, climbed Half Dome. So next slide, please. So um, like I was saying, after I um, let, or graduated from FIT, I got my second degree in fashion design and I worked as a, in the design industry in New York and I loved it, but I decided I got, I got to leave New York. I was there for eight years and oh, actually over eight years and it's a really hard place to live. I love New York. It's a great place to visit, but it was a hard place to live. So I said, I'm coming back to California. So my husband and I, we didn't have much of a plan, but luckily I got a, a interview with uh, Mattel. And the first brand that I worked on was Monster High. As you can see, it was my first love at Mattel. I was hired as a graphic designer temp. So it was just for three months. We have um, a lot of temps that work at Mattel as well. And there was another graphic designer on the brand. So we worked together and then suddenly she decided she didn't wanna work at Mattel anymore. So I had a full-time position and it was awesome. Next slide, please. So over my time I was working on Monster High, I was the sole graphic designer. So I designed, I mean, probably hundreds of graphics um, over the few years that I worked on uh, Monster High. But I just pulled a few of the um, ones that were my favorite and really fun ones. So as you can see, I have a picture of the product designer's um, original sketch. So that's something like what Carlisle was showing you. And then my job is the stuff that's in the middle. So that's the graphics. So for the top graphic, I use Illustrator and it uh, created a repeat. And for something like this, and a lot of times on Monster High, uh, the designers would kind of have an idea of what they wanted, but not like a clear cut um, design. So it gave me a lot of creative license to work back and forth with the designer. And it really just depends on what uh, product you're working on and what designer you're working with um, in terms of how much creative license you have as the graphic designer. So I also designed the wings and those were done in Photoshop. And as you can see, the final product looks super cute. Next slide, please. And here's another example of um, a doll that was in that line as well. 
So this was a really fun project that I worked on for Skelita. This was a collector's doll. So it was a $50 doll, which is like a really high price point for us. And it's really exciting because you can like add in a bunch of stuff that you want. Um, so for this one, I thought this was really cool because I was able to design the lace. So the, um, the skulls that you see at the top of the screen was actually turned into the lace, the white lace that you see on um, Skelita's dress. Next slide, please. This was one of the final projects I worked on for Monster High. So this was my first like celebrity project. I was really excited. I mean, it's Lady Gaga, so that's pretty awesome. And um, we worked with Lady Gaga and we worked with her sister as well to um, work towards, you know, getting the graphics right. So it was a lot of back and forth. So I worked on the graphics that you see um, for the shirt. And then there was also a graphic in the jacket. And then I also, um, design the uh, tattoos as well. Next up, so I know we've talked about how um, there's just so much creativity at Mattel and I feel like I work with the most creative people like ever and it's, it's so inspiring like on a daily basis. So BTS was actually pitched um, as an idea for, um, I mean, by another designer and I was there for the original pitch. So I was like, ooh, um, let me, I want to do a bit of more research about K-pop and BTS. So next slide, please. So I, as soon as I started listening to BTS, I Im immediately became a fan. And I think they're just awesome. Like if you haven't heard of BTS, they're like the biggest K-pop group worldwide and they are amazing. They make great music and they're super fun. So this is, um, kind of similar to a license. So Basically, because we are duplicating what they wore, um, like in concert or in their videos, we um, get pictures from the licensor and we have to try to duplicate it as closely as possible, but in doll scale. So these are the things that we receive at the beginning of the design process, where hopefully we'll get really like close up pictures so we can really get those details right. Sometimes we don't get those, but that's the goal. So these are some of the graphics I did. Um, we did a $20 doll um, line and we also did the prestige $50 doll line, which was in the uh, previous slide. So um, as you can see, you see the designer's original sketch and then I do the repeat graphics for the um, dolls. And these are really fun. I mean, I just love all these outfits and I want them personally, but they're fun to design. And my guy RM, my favorite. Next up, we have Polly. So Polly is a huge brand that we work on and it really has that nostalgia factor. So it's like moms and dads who played with Polly, you know, back in the 90s are buying it for their children now. So it's really awesome to work on this brand where it has such like a cult following. Next slide. So for Polly, it's not because the figures are like this small, it's not as much um, having to do with the graphics on the actual dolls, but it's a lot more having to do with what we call chip art. So it's like background art. So with this, it gives me a lot of creative license, like working with the designers because they'll have a theme and then they'll kind of be like, just go for it. Like, you know, give us some options of what you see as, you know, the background art. So these are really fun to do. And as you can see, the final product is on shelves or it was, I think it sold out. And this was another one, a prehistoric theme that was really fun too. Next up we have Disney Zombie. So this is a license that we worked on. And this was a really awesome one too, because it was a movie. So we get um, all the images from the character on the movie and then we go from there. So we also work with soft goods. That's a big part of our, um, you know, our team and they're a very important part of our team. So they create the patterns for each doll and we go back and forth with them in terms of like what the fit should be like and how the graphics should um, show on the pattern. So we get a blank slate in terms of the pattern and then we have to go, I as the graphic designer have to go from there in terms of putting the um, graphics onto these um, patterns. So this is an example of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> So it would be um, what you saw in the previous slide, the blank pattern, and then we put the graphics on there. And there's a lot of back and forth with that too, in terms of like, oh, it's not looking right, or we have to like move it to the right, or the color isn't printing out. And we did the same thing with the um, other main characters that
And this is an example of really trying to make it look realistic and as close as possible to the actual character. And we also get photo samples, which I love because we can really see it like in real time, what it's going to look like before it hits shelves. So this is an example of it all being sewn up and us like being able to give our feedback in terms of and updating anything that needed to be updated. And this is the final product. So it turned out really cute. I was really excited about this. Um, it's Disney, so that's awesome too. And the dolls are super cute. Uh, one of my other favorite projects is Harry, the Harry Potter brand. Um, this was also a license. And this was really exciting because I was a huge Harry Potter fan growing up. I read all the books, saw all the movies, all of that. So not only did I serve as um, the graphic designer, but I also kind of served as a consultant. So it's like, you know, working with the product designer on a face sculpt and giving her my opinion. Does this look like the character? Is this accurate to the movie? All of that. So this was a really fun um, license and we still have this one too. Um, so I don't do as much logo design, but this was a really fun project that I worked on this year. At Mattel, we have groups called um, ERGs, um, Employee Resource Groups. So it's kind of like a club or organization and I'm a part of um, what was known as Mattel African American Forum. So they had this logo that probably, I don't know when that logo was made, but maybe in like 2000 or something, it's super old. So we wanted to update it and rebrand and we wanted to rebrand as Black at Mattel. So I did a bunch of logo exploration and I took it to the board, we voted on it. And then we ended up with the logo that you see Black at Mattel. So I was really proud of that. And that's something that will last at Mattel for a really long time. So things you'll be working on if you become an intern at Mattel, fabric art, chip art, face deco, pitches, logo design, decks, and lots of other fun stuff. And I'm gonna pass it off to Simi, my manager and my friend. Ah, thanks, Tente. That was awesome. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. So many talented designers at Mattel. This is just a taste of the talent that we have here. Um, I'm Simi Kumes, a Mattel design manager. I am a toy designer, cat mom, and I'm a SMC alum. So I'm gonna tell you today, next slide about my background. So this is me, Samaria is my full name. Um, this is kind of a snapshot of my early childhood. So Simi is short for my true first name, Samaria. I was named after a blue fairy folk from Greek mythology. And my parents were hippies, like real hippies. These photos show pretty much what my young life was like. Uh, for years, we lived in a teepee in the woods, no electricity or plumbing. We just had an outhouse and a faucet. <laughs> my mom cooked on a wood stove in the middle of the teepee and we bathed in a tin tub, just like that picture there. Um, we milked goats every morning and would strain the warm, fresh milk right into our granola. Uh, I grew up with no TV and we had carob bars instead of chocolate bars. We were very off the grid. Um, but Barbie snuck into my life by way of my grandma and I fell in love. My first Barbie was actually that Western Barbie right there with the cool winking feature. She really winked. And my mom actually handmade her a very modest ankle length calico print prairie dress <laughs> so that she would look like us. Uh, next slide, please. So needless to say, I had trouble fitting into high school. So midway through 10th grade, I took a test, graduated, and I moved out on my own and started working full time. Um, and those next 10 years of my life are best described as a dumpster fire. It was a bad idea. Next slide, please. Um, but then I discovered SMC. Um, let's see, I lost my thought. Oh, I enrolled in the freshman design program for a year. And then I went to Santa Barbara City College for graphic design studies. And I can't say enough good things about community colleges. Um, community college taught me so much and it took me in a really creative direction and it literally changed my life to start going to community college. Um, here is, <laughs> here's one of my uh, projects from art class. So art classes were so great, but uh, you can see I still loved Barbie as a Barbie collector. Um, and here's one of my projects from my illustration class in gouache called Barbie and art history. Uh, you can see I took her through art history and put her in different paintings as the blonde classic ponytail Barbie. Next slide, please. And I never dreamed when I was in class learning charcoal techniques that one day my chalk art would be featured on Barbie's social media. This was the highlight of my year last year. Um, and that's an illustration I did at Santa Monica College. 
sometime in the 2000s. Next slide, please. Oh, there we go. So uh, my road from Santa Monica College to Mattel was not a straight line to success. Um, it was actually pretty wiggly woggly. I did lots of different stuff along the way before I got to Mattel. Um, so I'll walk you through some of it right now. Next slide. So before toys, I was going to Santa Barbara City College and I started working. Um, I was actually doing a lot of free work for restaurants and bars that I worked at. I did lots of flyers and advertisements and menus and anything they needed, lots of layout. Um, and I started doing a few freelance gigs like um, that Complexions Day Spa ad and logo. And then I got a temp job um, at a company called Mentor Direct designing really kind of boring medical brochures for catheters and breast implants. And it was just lots of layout and InDesign, clipping photos and super boring. But um, I heard about a job at a doll company and I leapt on it. Next slide, please. So at my first uh, toy design job or doll design job, um, those Jemmy Armstrong classes paid off. So I walked into this office, it was all painted, all colorful, there were dolls everywhere. I interviewed and the owner asked me to go home and draw a princess doll fashion uh, based on Cinderella and come back. So I took out my gouache, I took out my vellum, Canson vellum paper that I had from the class and I whipped up my design. I was so nervous. It was like the most nervous night of my life because I wanted that job so bad. And then I got hired. So thank you, Jemmy, <laughs> your, your text me. <laughs> so that was some design from my first job. Um, after my first job, I moved to Florida and I started working on uh, some different dolls. So uh, I got to work on some celebrity fashion dolls. Um, so first was Cheetah Girls with Raven Simone. So I designed those. I, I watched the middle of sketches. I went to a concert with a bunch of screaming eight-year-olds all around me and sketched their dresses while they were dancing. And uh, we did a lot of work on those, including graphic design. So I was doing fashion design and graphic design. Um, like those posters down there. And then also I worked on Hannah Montana, um, lots of graphic design and fashion design for her. Uh, it was really exciting to see Hannah Montana came out and she was a huge, huge hit, as you all know, she's Miley Cyrus today. And um, that was really fun. Next slide. I also worked on not quite as famous Hairspray the movie with Zac Efron and John Travolta. And I got to design um, a lot of the plastic parts for them. You can see control art here. I'll show you some more of that later. It's more of the industrial design part of toy design, which I actually learned on the job. And But I used my graphic design skills to uh, learn how to do this. It's basically measuring um, and designing all the angles of the piece that you want to create in plastic for the toy. Next slide, please. I also worked on the Taylor Swift doll. So she had a doll back in the day. I don't think it was very popular or known back then, but she did have a doll from Jack's Pacific. I worked on the pitch, which um, is what uh, we do in the toy industry when we approach a celebrity or license. We say, hey, we wanna make your doll. This is what it could look like. You know, Here's the graphic design, everything. So I worked on the style guide and those were mood boards down there at the bottom of what Taylor was like. She was just 18 back then and she was much more country. Um, and worked on the doll. And then here is a quick slice of um, technical, getting technical. These are, this is control art. This is what, um, we don't do much at Mattel, but in other toy design companies, you'll, um, and sometimes at Mattel, it's good to be able to do it. You draw like all the sides of the plastic piece before a sculptor creates it in, in CAD or ZBrush is what we use um, lately. So this is just kind of an interesting snapshot of how these toys are created. And then large dolls. So then I got into doing some large dolls, which were really fun because I have a really whimsical style and they're basically like designing children's fashion. So you have your doll, they're usually like, oh, it's a four year old, five year old girl. You're always, or boy, you're always looking at like children's fashion and you make these just little mini children's fashions, just super fun. Next slide, please. Um, I got to work on the iconic Cabbage Patch Kids that everybody loves. Here is an example of what we would do on Cabbage Patch Kids and also the graphics. So you can see just like what Jen Day is doing, we would design the outfit and then we'd do the graphics, show the scale and then spec out the colors for the graphic. Next slide, please. And fashion, fashion, fashion. People don't think of Cabbage Patch Kids as fashion, but when I worked on Cabbage Patch Kids, we were drawing fashions all day long. There's lots and lots of fashions. We do, first we do all our silhouettes with pencil and then um, we would actually put this all together in Photoshop. So we would sketch it in pencil, 
put in Photoshop, do the final coloring in Photoshop, and then have a bunch of options um, to choose from. And when I worked at this company, it was a, we'd send them to marketing and a design director at another company, and they would pick the ones they liked and then we'd color them, and then we'd make a, a soft goods sample. Next slide, and puny, puppy and bear fashion too. So I've designed fashions for puppies and bears, and uh, the fashion design in the toy industry is pretty fun because <laughs> you're not just designing for fashionable, glamorous people all the time. Sometimes it's like, hey, make me a punk chihuahua. You can see I did fashion flats for this one project and I designed some colors and then I designed these bears once for a company in England. I don't know if they ever came out, but it was really fun. Um, next slide, please. And then I ended up working for um, Hasbro for a few years and I worked on Baby Alive, which is a big baby doll. And that's where I started falling for features. Um, you can see features are kind of different from designing the fashions. You're really thinking about, you, you design the fashions and how the doll looks you're thinking about what the doll's doing. So I invented a light up diaper where you put the um, bottle in the doll's mouth and then the diaper lights up and she goes, I went pee pee. It was called tinkles and twinkles, <laughs> uh, color change tea, uh, ice cream licking feature, a magic band-aid in the doll's knee. Um, and then one of my favorite dolls um, eats and poops Play-Doh. That was a huge hit. Next slide, please. Here's a little splash of something I really got into when I was working at Hasbro is um, mood boards. So I got to work on the iconic My Little Pony Equestria, Equestria Girls for a little while, and we did lots of mood boards. So mood boards is a huge part of any design, um, especially a fashion doll design, but really any doll. Like when we do baby dolls, we do mood boards as well. Um, you can see Pinkie Pie, like what would she be like fashionable? So, you know, really looking at how to portray that spirit of Pinkie Pie through fashion and little call outs. And, and it's just a really fun graphic design project for um, interpreting the design. And then here is a design I did for um, Rarity in her gown with her mood board with her roses and the final doll. They took her tattoo off. It's called cost reduction. We'll tell you about that later. <laughs> Next slide, please. So in 2015, Mattel approached me and I was super excited because I've always loved Mattel. Mattel's the number one toy company. It has the best designers. It's got the best everything. It has Barbie. So I freaked out. Um, I interviewed, they made me an offer. I got the job. So super excited to be at Mattel in 2015. It's like that picture shows. <laughs> so my first Mattel project was a character designer's dream. I worked on a project called My Mini Mixy Cues. These are teeny tiny dolls. They're less than an inch tall um, with a pop and swap feature. And they were in collectible in a blind box, sort of like a, a Dunny or a Kokeshi doll or Momiji, um, except for they're for kids. Two would come in a box. And I just designed hundreds of these. It was super fun. I designed my cubicle and I designed, designed, designed. Um, and they came out. And next slide, please. They kept adding more. You could see, I think I designed like 600 of these. They're just so fun. Each one had to be unique. They each had a different name. And I did this all in Adobe Illustrator, which is a little bit different from a lot of our projects at Mattel, but it's very interesting technology. Um, so I would design just the front of it in Illustrator and turn the vector art over to our MOA, which is our um, China office partners. And then they would, uh, next slide, please. They directly print the graphic design from um, Adobe Illustrator onto the plastic. So it's a really cool um, printing technology we use at Mattel. Often we use it in different brands on the faces. So it's basically graphic design, like you print on paper, but it's printed on the toy. So that really shows you how the um, design and graphic design really go into the toy when you see it on the shelf. It's uh, sometimes it's hand painted, but they're going more and more towards printing um, with the DIJ printing technology. And you can see all the details in that tiny thing. And not my first poop toy, but possibly the cutest. <laughs> I, I do like a good poop toy. Kids like poop. I'm a mom. It's just funny. So uh, I thought this up one day and Mattel, we made, ended up making it at Mattel. It's called Pooparoos, um, inspired by the pooping unicorn memes and everything that's going around. I thought, hey, you know, if it's just a squishy little ball with a hole in the bottom and you put a cupcake in and you squeeze it, it could come out like a little poop. And I went and made one in the model shop and lo and behold, it worked. And next thing you know, we had pooparoos that came out on the mar market and totally silly. It ended up coming in a little toilet, a uh, surprise toilet, or you could buy it out of the toilet and um, they ate and they pooped. <laughs> next slide, please. And then my last project um, 
these are still, you can still get them on Amazon, uh, my dream job and my dream dolls. So I got to design this really great brand called Wild Hearts Crew. I could see these girls they are punky, they're cool. One of them's inspired by Jen Day. Uh, and they, there was a set of five dolls. They're all friends. Next slide, please. Um, I designed them with a Monster High designer, and it was really cool to meet someone who was also a design mom. She's and she's punky. So the doll on the side with the uh, the radio is more like her, kind of punky. I've always liked kind of retro fashions, so we kind of combined and we created this cool brand, and it was a dream come true. And great toy design is all about the graphics. So Jen Day worked on this brand as well. You can see all the graphics. These are the fashion packs. So everything here. You know, it's a different graphic design project from designing a little Rosie the Riveter inspired illustration to doing all the tattoos to the rad logo to level up and even like the little um, that's a real little record and then she designed both sides of the record cover. So lots of fun if you love design Mattel is a great place to work next slide please. And now here comes <laughs> me and Jenday can talk some more about all the stuff you could do at Mattel. Um, this doll was inspired by Jenday, so <laughs> we always think of her. We're like, dye your hair purple, come on. She hasn't done it yet, but that's her. And <laughs> Corey Cruz is the name. And yeah, that's a little slice of what design life is like at Mattel. And I think now we can open it up to Q&A. Um, Carlisle is here still too, I think. And me and Jenday are happy to answer any questions because our group is the group that's looking for an internship. But any questions about Mattel, we are here for you. Um, thank you so much. I don't know how you all feel, but I am like so inspired by these presentations. I'm ready to apply to Mattel and I have none of these skills. <laughs> it just seems like you guys seem like a great team with so uh, such a fun job. Um, for those of you who have questions, I know you guys are locked on mute, but if you could go in and um, just raise your hand um, and we can call on you and we can unmute you. So we definitely want to encourage you to raise your hand and ask questions. Um, this is your perfect opportunity, right? Um, stop I don't know here. Oh, stop um, here. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say, I don't, I don't know. Um, see me if you, if you want to take a minute to talk, just, just to give a brief, um, uh, summary about the internship, um, because what I want you all to recognize here is that so they're here to inspire and uh, to inspire us, which I feel like they have, but also, again, just to let you know about this internship, and they shared with you this incredible work that they have, so we would like, hopefully, at the end of this, for you all to apply for these internships, and you are going to need a portfolio <laughs> in your application, so hopefully what you have seen here today so far has inspired you to think about your portfolio and what that could look like, so I just want to put that out there um, for a moment before you ask questions. And Lori, you wanted to add something? Oh, I was gonna say, is, can we stop the share so we could see everybody perhaps? Oh. Is that possible? I have a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. we are. Yay. Yes, we love, we love to see you guys. <laughs> Did you wanna add anything else I see uh, before I start calling on people? Well, uh, no, I see all our fashion students. It's so great. And I know their graphic design and art uh, students are here. This is a perfect, thank you guys all so much. You perfectly brought what the aspects of fashion, graphics and art, how, how it all melts together. And you could take different routes in your career and end up at this great place. So thank you, thank you so, so much for that. I was, I'd rather have the students come out and say something, but I will say I'm a Barbie nerd. Here's my 1960, uh, what do you call it? Um, a convertible with Barbie in it and all that. So lifelong Barbie fan. Um, so it's just, like I said, it's immersed in a part of fashion of everyone's life. So if someone would want to start the questions, uh, Oh. Yeah, so we have, we actually have um, Arizu, I'm going to go ahead and um, if you want to start with your question, Arizu. Yes, yeah, sorry. I have a question about the, no, because I saw in the tag, uh, in the email, we have to know about the Illustrator and Photoshop, but I worked with uh, Procreate. Uh, it, does it matter or I have to learn 
Illustrator or Photoshop? That's a good question. Actually, a lot of our designers who are toy designers, more like um, what Carlyle does, uh, they do do Procreate. So Procreate's a great tool. Um, if you work at Mattel, we give you an iPad with the Procreate pen and everything. Um, but for what we're looking for for the um, graphic internship is um, the Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Illustrator is probably the um, program we use the most for graphics. So it's wonderful to learn Procreate. I'm finding uh, most of our students who are interning in more of the um, toy design, fashion design are um, using Procreate. And we definitely want to look at everyone's portfolio, but for this particular in, um, internship, it's more of a graphic internship. And, and, and they're great programs to learn. So I'd recommend learning them. I've used them a million times for everything. Yeah, I, you know, and I just want to add on um, to those of you who haven't taken the classes yet at SMC, we do have um, Fashion 18 hey. uh, by Professor yeah. Robert Armstrong, who is here with us. Um, and uh, that is uh, Fashion 18 is Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator for Fashion. So that would be a great class to take to get you started um, on the graphic design. And we also have Pro Professor Nicola Runk. Room quick. Oh my God, Nicole, I always ruin your name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> ruin. Um, she teaches graphic design 18 digital design tools, which also goes over um, Photoshop and Illustrator. So those would be some great classes that you guys could leave here and like maybe be ready for Mattel next year, right? Um, yeah, I think for any fashion, like any industry that you go into that's more production, uh, I think uses, it's like kind of a basic that you need to learn fashion. Like if you're working at Target or uh, any company that's really making fashions, Jinde could talk more about that as well. She studied fashion design and then went into more of the production end where we're making things for the mass market and producing fashions. Um, it all uses Adobe Illustrator at this point. Okay, and then I see we have, um, um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to ruin everybody's name today. Um, Tikani, Tikani, um, you can correct my pronunciation. <laughs> If you want to ask your question, you just have to unmute yourself. It's not allowing you to. Um... You're, you're unmuted. You're, you're unmuted. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi. Uh, you pretty much got it right, Bonnie. Um, well, first, I guess I want to say that, uh, well, yeah, this is, uh, this whole presentation has been really interesting and inspiring. I have to say personally, just because I don't know. It's uh, it's funny because I was never growing up specifically like for a while. I was never like really into dolls or anything like that. I was pretty much a tomboy. But I do remember that when around Monster High came out, um, I got really into it and uh, kind of changed my whole opinion on like stuff like that because I just thought the designs were really big and cool. And from there, it was sort of like, oh hey, maybe <laughs> maybe this is just like maybe this isn't really you know maybe this is uh like more to it than I thought initially. And then I've been a fan of that ever since. But um, basically my question is, I guess, just if you are putting together a portfolio or if you have a portfolio that you might use, but you haven't necessarily done anything that's like specifically like in terms of doll design or anything like that, what would you say the best thing to compile? Like just fashion design or should you try to do your own doll designs or if you, should you try, like, what would you, what would you say to put in it? That's a, great. a good question. Um, Jade can say what she, it's me and Jade will be looking through most of these. I mean, I'd love to see fashion design. We're definitely looking for people who are strong graphic designers. If you've done any print design, that's what we do a lot. Um, you know, you saw some of the things Jade was working on, print design, stickers, um, illustration, if you're a strong illustrator and want like the background art on those Polly Pocket um, things are an example of the kind of thing we're looking for. And, you know, fashion design's great, but um, it's more graphic focused for this first internship for the fall. Um, anything you'd be looking for, Jende? Yeah, um, my advice is for any job you interview with, it should be curated towards whatever the company is making. So, I mean, when I was interviewing, I would definitely switch up my uh, portfolio anytime I had an interview. It's a lot of work, but, um, it's it's worth it because it shows that you know you're interested in what the company makes and you've done your research um so yeah looking for repeats and just really seeing what your illustration style is like um that's what we're looking for 
Thank you. Um, that was a great question. Um, next up, we have Melody. Melody, if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I was already unmuted. Um, so I'm just curious, are the internships remote or in person? Student. Um, it may be a mix of both. It may be hybrid. We're still kind of in the process of figuring out, um, you know, return back to work. So by the time September rolls around, which is when we are looking to have someone start, um, we may have a different answer and it may be in person. Um, but for now, it's a little bit up in the air. The good thing is, is you all are, I assume, local for the most part. So we have a little bit of um, flexibility in, in getting you into the office if we are all back in there. So Seema, so Seema, this is Jenna from the Career Center. So definitely be willing to do one or the other, right? Because even at SMC, we're doing some on-ground classes in the fall. So just being, having some flexibility to possibly yep. to be required to be on ground. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that'll be very important. And it's a part-time internship. So, um, and of course, you know, our team will, will update you on any, you know, kind of nature of return to work or hybrid or whatever it may be. Thank you. Um, and then the next question we have is from Mariali. Mariali, um, if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, uh, it's very quick. Uh, I'm an international student, so I was wondering, like, if I can do the internship for free, <laughs> so I don't have to use, like, my OPT yet. Oh, wow, I've never gotten that question before. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we have to pay you. Um, yeah, so no, we, we, do, um, we do accept international students, and we welcome them. Um, but we do are required and will, of course, always pay for, for work. Um, so yes, unfortunately, you will have to receive a paycheck. <laughs> and I, I think um, that if you wanted to enroll in a class, um, you, you can, you know, you have to meet with the immigration specialist and get them to sign off and say that it's okay. But we do have an internship class that you can take that will um, help you be able to participate and get that credit and not be a problem with your visa. And and I think that yeah it'll with the hours that it entail it would be a three unit a three unit uh, credit for that. And I just have to chime in Mattel on your resume who cares if you're worth using it. <laughs> <laughs> That's worth it. You can't do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go on. Next question, Amory. Okay. Oh, the next question is from our um, professor, Jan Ardell. Oh, <laughs> Jan. Oh, un unmute. Yeah, I figured it out. Thank you, Amory, and thank you all of you for coming. It has been awesome. And I just want to say how I can't say it enough. The mood board thing just just really excites me because I teach the end class and they just don't know. I keep saying story, mood board, come on. You really have to understand that because you got to sell your next product. And I just am so excited about how you guys have to sell each new product and how you put it all together. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for inspiring our students. I can't wait to get their questions next, tomorrow. <laughs> Jan, oh, yeah. Mood what boards. class is it that you that you teach that? Oh, it's the fashion show class. It's the end fashion show class. So these are the students that you all have to come and see our fashion show. We'll give you a link, I'm sure. And it's all digital, of course. And so they have to come up with a mood board, the whole presentation from concept to completion. So this is exactly what their reality is. So yeah. it's, it's so fashion, exciting. Fashion 17, of uh, uh, advanced yes, sorry. <laughs> manufacturing. Fashion 17. So we're, we're pitching 17. We're pitching 18. <laughs> we just we just want to let you know where you can get the skills if you don't have them yet. Right. <laughs> so thank you. Right. Thank you again. Um, and then the next question we have is from uh, Pavel. If you want to unmute yourself. And uh, Pavel. Pavel. Thank you, Pavel. Um, I, I'd like to start off by uh, thanking everybody for the presentation. And my question is, are you only looking for, um, for undergrad uh, internship? Um, can you be more specific in terms of what maybe you Like, are, um, or... is the internship only for- um, Current as uh, a student? Uh, undergrad. 
It is for current SMC students. I think you can apply and then, you know, we want to be able, you know, if there's the right talent and fit there, mm -hmm. um, you know, and Jay, Jenday and Simi will look. And even if it's something you maybe are not eligible for, we love getting resumes and portfolios because you never know when there's a future fit um, in a different role. So, you know, regardless, um, feel free to keep in touch and um, send your information over because we're always, you know, hiring. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, we have so many questions. I love it. So I'm sorry. Just keep moving along. I want to try and get in as many as we can. Um, Juliet, if you want to go ahead and ask your question, unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. Um, so I was just wondering, is this internship on, like, obviously I am an SMC student, but is it only available to SMC students? Yeah. Yes. Or is it open to everyone? No, you're in a special group, you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Mitchell. Yeah, yes. no, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah, we actually have internship programs with several other colleges, but um, this is the first time we're opening it to SMC. So we're super excited that yeah. everyone's here and uh, we can't wait to interview you. So, so we want you guys, we know, we know SMC is going to show up like we do. <laughs> make make mm -hmm. amazing portfolios. And we'll talk about that before the end. Um, you have your incredible faculty that are here. They're here watching the presentations. They're learning what Mattel is looking for as well. And I'll share with you when we get closer to the end, um, they are going to have office hours available for you specifically. So I have their contact information that I'll share with you so that you can um, book appointments with um, myself and with them to get your portfolio reviewed. You want to, you know, you want to put your best foot forward on this one. So um, with that said, uh, Aaron, you, Aaron Bond, you are next. Oh, you wanna, hello. You know. I'll, uh, I'll keep it short. So what does the, uh, the daily kind of, um, expectations or roles the intern would be performing? Like what's the day in the life of an intern at Mattel in that department, of course. This is a good question because we're actually doing our first COVID internships. So, um, right. I mean, for us lately at, on my team, we have a 10 a.m. check in. We all say hi to each other, which we started right after quarantine started because I'm the manager. I was like, oh, we have to make sure everyone's OK. So I put on our we say hi every morning, get out of bed, say hi at 10. <laughs> Some people on the team are earlier, so they'll start working early. Um, other I'm more of a night person, so I, I'm not like that early. Um, and then, yeah, if there's projects that day that we're all, you'll probably work on um, a few different brands, actually lots of different brands. On my team in particular, we have um, large doll and baby doll brands and something called Hot Toys that we're working on. Um, but Jen Day works on everybody's um, projects. And so you'll be working closely with her and it'll probably be, you know, touching base. I think it will be doing it part-time. So it'll probably be like three days a week. Um, I don't know what the exact hours are, but I think it's around 30 hours a week or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, you'll check in online. Um, we'll have things for you to do. There'll be training and stuff that Milan and Seema are planning. I imagine with um, a little bit of intern stuff to get to know Mattel, but um, it's, hopefully we'll get to come and have a tour. Um, and yeah, day to day, it's design, design. So we're, we're uh, working and then we do lots of meetings. As an intern, you probably would come to like our work in progress meeting where you get to see designers sharing. We do a lot of presenting at Mattel and a lot of sharing and it's teamwork, heavy teamwork. So um, you would not be alone. <laughs> like if you were coming into the office, it's lots of meetings, lots of teams, lots of standing around tables, looking at things, discussing. Um, and then we have leadership, like the VP that had a video in the beginning. That's our, our my boss directly, Natasha. She's an amazing designer. She's worked all over the industry. And she is now VP at Mattel. And um, so she looks at things once, like our whips once a week. We have team meetings with engineers. We work with marketing very heavily. It's um, what you call cross-functional. So in one team, there's packaging designers, there's an engineer, there's a project manager, there is um, marketing, and then other disciplines will come in and out. You know, there's soft goods, there's a hair and face expert, all kinds of things like that. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it will keep you busy. <laughs> That's amazing. That sounds so cool. <laughs> um, Aaron Goldman, you are up next if you want to unmute yourself. Un unmute. 
un unmute. Okay, there you go. Okay, now we're good. Now we're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi. Um, I had a question specifically about the specs and the PMS colors. I was wondering if you were looking for interns to convert swatches from CMYK to Pantone or what the specs entail. Usually we use um, PMS coded. It just depends on the project, but um, it's kind of different from the fashion industry because I think I use CMYK in the fashion industry. Um, but yeah, we usually use coded and we'll give you a book and all of that. So it, it, it um, makes it simple. <laughs> okay, perfect, thank you. Um, okay, the next person we have is Samantha. If you wanna ask your question, Samantha. Hello? You're good, we can hear oh, so you. So you didn't just catch me shouting at my children, did you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, it looks like so much fun and your team look like they um, have a great communication. And I was getting pretty excited when you were um, sharing um, how you're building your costumes and characters. And I really wanted to ask about the storytelling that's involved when you're creating these characters and how you promote them to say an artist or like Taylor Swift, you brought her up. How you go about promoting that within the story and costume and set, laying out the setting for these clients to sign on for this. It's, I'm really curious. How do you get them on board with this story? I'm <laughs> we do a lot of this at Mattel, actually. I mean, if you're an intern, you might be involved with the Jenna I put pitches in her, um, in her thing. So recently we have two things that were announced recently. Um, we have Trolls. You may have heard of Trolls, the Trolls. And we also got a really great property called Karma. And Jenday was involved. I think you're involved with the Karma pitch pretty heavily, right? And then, so that's one of our more recent ones, um, I believe. So what happens often in the toy industry is a few different toy companies will compete for one property. Uh, like Disney Princess is a famous one. Um, so when we were pitching for uh, Trolls, Hasbro had it. And so we build models, we do um, PowerPoints and graphics and uh, mock up the packaging and talk about um, a lot of financial stuff that we're not really involved with. And then marketing will talk about their end of it, like how they're gonna promote our new product. And basically we can do the best job, we're Mattel. But even though we're Mattel, we don't always get the things. Sometimes other companies will get um, a pitch, but um, yeah, there's just a lot involved. It's a big team effort. And you know we have very, very, very good um, marketing people and VPs that are in our leadership who will come in and you know, do more of the pitching and the talking and the deal part. And as designers, we usually support by just making things look amazing. So uh, did you wanna say anything about karma? Jenda, you were just working on that one. What did you yeah. have to do for karma? I would actually say that storytelling is a big part of our jobs, especially like I was saying in my presentation that, you know, everybody's so creative and everybody always has ideas, but a lot of times we have to pitch those ideas even internally. So it's like, if you can, <clears throat> tell the story very well aside from obviously having great design then it really will work in your favor um so I would say that's something like I didn't have to do in the fashion industry it was no there was no storytelling it was just designing um so yeah it's a really fun part of the process too and yeah the karma pitch was huge it was fun and um it's ludicrous you know ludicrous the rapper actor slash he does everything um, it's his um, idea and it's about his daughter, Karma. So I was really excited because I'm like an old school Ludacris fan. And I was like, oh my God, I really want this property. So, you know, it was a huge pitch that we put together in terms of putting together models and like making videos. And I had to actually sing in one of the videos. So it was really fun, but um, I don't know. It's just, it's a big part of our job at Mattel. You should Google it because Karma is going to be big and it's, an adorable doll and a great story. That sounds really cool. <laughs> um, so thank you. Thank you for that great question. Um, next, uh, we have uh, Professor Professor Bonnie Tanaka, who teaches our graphic design portfolio class. If you want to unmute yourself. <laughs> um, I think I'm unmuted, right? You're yeah. good. You're good. Okay, great. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, could you let us know exactly or 
um, semi exactly what you'd like to see in student portfolios and about how many pieces you'd like them to present? Great question. Actually, yeah, we didn't really discuss a time. How much time do we have scheduled for each interview? Usually Seema and Milan help us run like the timing and stuff. Um, I've interviewed a lot of students and, you know, lots of stuff in your portfolio is fine. It's about going through it um, clearly and, you know, being able to talk to us. And if we ask questions, you just stop on something. Um, you know, if you have a ton of stuff, just make sure you could get through it um, in the time that we have allotted, maybe even practice just walking through it and giving 10 minutes extra for questions. Um, and yeah, as far as what we want to see, Milan and uh, Simo, is there, are they like half an hour interviews or? Yeah, I was, was going to jump in and say, you know, typically it's about 30 minutes you'll have with the team. And it's very similar to probably what you do with a portfolio review. You walk them through the task, your, your thought process, um, and that 30 minutes can fly by. So that's a great tip to definitely practice through that. And storytelling comes into play there as well. You know, we want to know what, how you made your piece and maybe some of the, what this class is about and things like that are always interesting. Um, process is what we do all the time at work. So you know, did you sketch this first? And then did you go into Adobe Illustrator and render it? And things like that are always really interesting. Um, Shinde, what are you looking for, for uh, in a portfolio? Um, examples of using Photoshop and Illustrator. So I don't wanna to be too specific because, you know, obviously we wanna see each person's creativity, but just um, we wanna make sure that everybody can use, um, you know, Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, yeah, those would be the biggest things. And, Hand sketching is cool too, but we, we, you know, people do hand sketching and then it's, it's gonna be made digital anyway. So it's really about the Photoshop and Illustrator skills. And anything to do with toys, you know, we're a toy company, we're all toy nerds, we love toys. <laughs> when someone comes like, I hired an intern last summer and she showed up with handmade toys that she had made. And I was like, yes, you love toys, it's obvious. You got your rainbow eyeshadow, you got your handmade unicorn. <laughs> Welcome to Mattel. So stuff like that. And she could draw really well and knew all the programs. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, what we're looking for. Thank you. Thank you very much. I muted myself. I'm sorry. Um, so I just wanted to say before before um, I call the next question, um, just to follow up on that, that our amazing um, partners here at Mattel are going to be coming back on May 25th. Um, you all had to register to attend this meeting. So we are going to email you the information um, for that. Um, they're going to be talking about uh, interview prep. So, um, so just wanted to take a moment to say that. And then Professor Lori Ivis, who is, is the, the co-host uh, from SMC this evening. <laughs> I just have a, a quick question for you, Carlisle. Again, amazing, amazing desire. And Jendaya and, and Simi, you really answered it as well, but is there any class you, you wish you would have taken or you could tell our students uh, that, you know, oh, you should take this class or what you've seen when you've interviewed people that you think, God, it, it would be so great if they had a background in this or they studied this, you know, could it could be fashion history or, you know, a technical skills class or is there something that you really found valuable or even wish you would have taken maybe even that might help. I think definitely when you said fashion history, I think, especially in my role designing Barbie and, you know, Barbie's always been a reflection of culture around her at the time. Yes. So Barbie's been around since 1959. So understanding historical references and what certain silhouettes mean, where they're placed in history, I think is very, very important. Yes. And I think it's important because, you know, you do a drop waist silhouette, it gives you a 1920s vibe. But then if you do something that's like at the waist, okay, we're going kind of fifties, right? I think that's very important because it's those unspoken, it's storytelling in, in a silhouette, right? We've, we've all discussed storytelling in a different way. Um, I think another thing that's really important, and it's, I don't know how you take a class in this, but it's, in a way it's like empathy because it's, you have to step outside of yourself when you're designing a product for somebody else. Whether that product is a child, you know, of any age, of any, you know, culture or like socioeconomic background like 
you know, maybe the child you're designing for, they can afford one Barbie in their entire life. So that one Barbie better be the most amazing, cute, fun, delicious, yummy Barbie ever, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're designing for an adult collector, like they've seen everything, right? They have expendable income. They go to Barbie conventions. They spend thousands of dollars on vintage Barbies. So what's that new thing that's gonna excite them? Mm -hmm. So I think that ability to step outside of yourself and think about really who you're designing for, I think is um, something that, you know, I always try to do with all of my designs and also that I look for in, you know, whenever I happen to like um, maybe interview for a potential designer for decision or something. Great, thank you. Because I was mentioning that I teach an ethnic fashion class as well. And Barbie is one of the assignments. They design Barbies around the world and Barbies in different cultures. Some of you guys that are here sitting here are from that class. And like I said, so all your creations and we've oh we'd love to see that <laughs> yeah it's right. no it's so cool no definitely and we've shown some of the visuals that you have i have for that so thank you so much to all of you in design it's you're so appreciated thank you um i think um before we take more questions just in case people have to start um in case people start to have leaving in case people start to have to leave um i just want to make sure that I um, take a moment to, um, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna screen share just really quickly. Um, and would be nice, let me pull it up and just show you, um, this is what we're gonna be emailing you. Um, so um, you'll have, you know, you'll have the, the information about the next event that talks about the interviews and the link. A little bit of a background on Mattel, um, and then this is this is these are the faculty that are going to be available to help you review your portfolio. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge um, them. So, uh, fashion professor Lori Ivis, if you want to just say hello. Hello. Yes. Just email me, and then we could set up a Zoom once you kind of ingested this wonderful presentation today, and now you kind of got the direction. So definitely, thanks so much. And then um, Professor Robert Armstrong. Yes, uh, email me uh, as well, especially when it comes to any Photoshop or Illustrator uh, work, which is what I uh, specialize in. And, and, and Professor Armstrong also teaches Fashion 21, the fashion portfolio class. Exactly. Um, and then uh, Professor Nicola Ruink. Are yes, you hi, Nicola Ruink. Um, yeah, please email me. I'm more than happy to help you with the graphics. Um, I teach graphic design. I teach the GD18, the Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign. And I can certainly help you. I'm not in fashion, but I'm great at uh, helping with the portfolio preparation. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. And then um, la last on the list, uh, we have Bonita, Bonnie, Professor Tanaka. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, so go ahead, email me. I'm totally thrilled to help you in any way possible to help you shape and decide on what you're going to put in, what you're going to take out of your portfolio. Okay. Perfect. So I think we also have our some of our um, times down there when we're going to be available. So, you know, if the time that's listed there doesn't quite fit into your schedule, just email me and I'm sure, you know, email anybody else and they will work around your schedule for sure. Okay, great. We look forward to this. Yes. And again, um, Professor Tanaka teaches graphic design 50, which is the portfolio class. So I just want to acknowledge you all and thank you all for um, coming and um, supporting our incredible students as well. So um, that being said, um, I'm going to go uh, to Professor Dami. Pituro, if you want to go ahead and ask your question. Oh, you're, you're still muted if you want to. Try it again. Okay, it wouldn't, it wouldn't let me. I wasn't allowed to yet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hello. Thank you very much for this presentation. It's fabulous. Um, I wanted to ask some questions about the internship and um, some things that are also happening here at Santa Monica College. Um, now, this is on the illustration side, design side of things. I'm from the other end of the spectrum. I'm from the, the sculpture and 3D modeling and the imaging and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to find out in the future if there was interest also in other things. So we're bringing in more of that to Santa Monica College now. 
because I'm an expert. I'm from the field, so I've worked. I've actually worked on a whole bunch of Barbie projects. I worked on a, a lot of the motion capture for the the recent Barbie animated series that was happening at the a, a studio I was working at. Um, but yeah, so a lot of the students are getting into those. They'll, they'll sculpt the cats. Uh, a lot of 3D printing, 3D scanning, a lot of ZBrush, a lot of you know 3D modeling work. I have a whole class, and I have both traditional sculpture and um, 3D sculpture, you know, output and things like that. So um, just wanted to find out opportunities at Mattel for those kind of things. And in, in, you know, if you're not in this department, but you know, in other places, because uh, like I said, we have scanners actually on campus now. Actually, at the airport, we're actually um, putting in some um, human scanners and things like that. So. That's awesome. I think Milan and Sema can talk more to the opportunities, but that is so what we do at Mattel. There's a whole other part of um, the model making that we didn't even get into here with sculpting and outputting models. We have a whole room. We have like the best 3D printers at, in the industry, I think, at our, our place. And, and it's going more and more in that direction of um, CAD and 3D modeling and ZBrush for all kinds of things. So um, Milan and Sema can talk to the opportunities, but it's definitely in our wheelhouse. <laughs> Um, I mean, I would say as far as internships goes, we don't have like a current, you know, program or a role in place, but, you know, we're, all, as I mentioned earlier, we're always hiring for, you know, those types of roles. So I think the best way of anyone aside from an internship position is interested or looking for work, you know, definitely, you know, all of our positions are always listed at, you know, jobs.mattel.com and you can filter by location. Um, and then by, by specialty as well. So if you're looking for something specific, you can search by keyword or specific skill. Um, so definitely keep that in mind as well. Perfect, thank you so much for that. Um, so next up we have Hermione, if you wanna go ahead and ask your question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I was wondering, well, first of all, thank you and everyone for the amazing um, presentation. I wish I could send my portfolio right now, like immediately. I'm really excited about it. But I was wondering about credit for the um, internship. Do you have to register for the internship like as a class at SMC or can you take the internship like on top of your regular classes? So, um... I will say that um, this is a paid internship, so you are not required to be enrolled in an internship class. It is an optional choice for you. Right. Um, if you choose um, to enroll in an internship course, um, yeah, you can, we can, there's definitely, you can absolutely do that, right? Um, okay. I'm not sure if that fully addressed your question. I, I, when I yeah. sent the, the link to the um, form I just showed you, I'll, I'll include and on um, internship classes and how, how you register for that. Okay, yeah, I just, I mostly wanted to know if it was a requirement to like register for the, okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you, good question. Um, okay, so, and then um, Dahlia, if you wanna go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yeah, hi, firstly, I would like to say thank you to the panelists and everyone for the beautiful presentation. I, I've been a big fan of Barbie ever since I was a little kid and seeing the progress of everyone doing their thing to contribute to the design, it just made me like so like inspired and uh, <laughs> I just, I also can't wait to send my portfolio in. Um, my question is, I'm sorry, I wrote it right here. Um, are there any restrictions in the portfolios? Like, is there something that we should look out for that we shouldn't include? Like any limitations to what we can like send over or is it just like it's like free for all like what we send is exactly our work and there's like no limitation no filter no nothing well I would definitely think of things that are more geared towards toy and doll design for girls like you know um yeah if it's like an industrial art sculpture of like a wall with bricks on it or so, I don't know something that's like not <laughs> anything related to what we do maybe not put that in there um but I mean, if you really feel like that represents you, go ahead, but do think like, look at our products, look at what Chen Day is doing with the graphics, like anything that looks more in that area is what we're looking for for someone we're gonna hire. So that's how again, I filter it. Again, cause keeping in mind the 30 minute interaction with them, like you wanna have them really look at that. So, you know, what's really specific. 
Yeah, I was going to add to that, you know, you have 30 minutes and sometimes I have students that send me like all of the work that they've ever done in their life, which is great. I know you're excited about it, but that 30 minutes does fly by. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, next, uh, we have a question from Nicola, Professor Nicola. Yeah, just real quick. Um, you almost touched on it, but not quite. Do you want these in PDFs? Would you rather have a link to a website? Um, how would you? How do you want this technically formatted? And would you have that? Yeah, I know you'll probably go over this in the interview um, with the student. I'm assuming you would have it projected or something. How's that going to go down? Oh, in terms of just the format of the portfolio, um, you know, usually PDF form is fine, or if you do have a portfolio link, that's great as well. Um, you know, in the case that you're going forward with an interview, you would just, it would be a Zoom situation. You would share your screen and you would walk the team uh, through your work. So no preference PDF versus website. Yeah, no preference. Got it. Thank you. That was an awesome question. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> um, and Julie, you are up next. If you Hello. Want. Um, yeah, I just had a quick question. It might have been mentioned before, uh, uh, but I didn't hear it and I was just trying to listen for it. How many internships approximately are available? Good question. It's uh, this year, it's, it's small. It's about one or two positions that we have available. But that is a good question. Again, oh, lots of great questions. So thank you for asking that. Um, Natsumi, if you want to go ahead and ask your question. Yes. Hi. And first, uh, thank you for the great presentation. I'm so excited. And it was so great. Um, my question is that uh, will the intern um, get to explore other department too? Because I, I just thought uh, the design for fashion doll and design for hot wheels are very different. And two questions. So will the intern get to explore different design thing? And two, will uh, in the moment you started at Mattel from today, were you able to um, explore different department, different design? <laughs> That's a great say, question. Uh, it's actually um, during regular times. I mean, we could by fall be partially open up again. Mattel's just this big magical building full of different toy designers. There's a Barbie area, there's a Hot Wheels area. There's um, our teams upstairs and we have all kinds of stuff going on. There's another building across the street that's all the photo studio. Um, but since it's uh, might just be all online, we'll have to see how we can explore <laughs> with, with different. Um, we try to have people network as much as they can. Hot Wheels design is a great um, design department. There's actually a lot of people who uh, end up being um, Hot Wheels designers were originally um, actually trying to be car designers and then they end up coming to uh, Mattel and designing Hot Wheels and they like it better because they design the whole cars, all these different cars or fantasy cars. So kind of like real people who wanted to really design full-size fashions end up designing fashion for Barbie. Um, so it's a whole area in itself, but they do have graphic designers. It's a pretty half heavily graphic uh, brand. But yeah, we don't really know um, what it will look like in as far as coming into the office at that in fall. Um, am I correct? Seema and Milan, the, the networking that usually goes on might not be the same. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. Okay, so we have, um, we have about four minutes left, but we have uh, three questions left. So we are going to take the, the, the three people that do have their questions that have been waiting a really long time. So thank you for being so patient. Um, I'm gonna go ahead um, and Blake, if you wanna ask your question. Hi, Mattel team. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, presentation. Um, I'm actually coming from the other side. I'm in the cosmetology department um, and I was looking for um, some information on how the uh, hair designer position which I've actually um, very recently applied for at Mattel, um, how they interact with the fashion department. Because I did see like in the description when I was applying and putting my package together that there is a bit of interaction and I do have a degree in fashion design as well. So I was just curious how the two interact when um, the design teams are putting together a new project. 
I think Carlisle would be a good yeah. person to do this one. <laughs> so when I work with a hair designer, you know, I design, I have my whole sketch and, um, you know, I design the hairstyle um, like very intentionally. Like, you know, I've been at Mattel for 10 years so I can kind of translate a real hairstyle into a doll hairstyle. But I still work with a hair designer to pick out the right colors that we're going for. And, you know, we don't dye Barbie hair. Like it comes, it's plastic, it comes as it is. And so to get different highlights or, you know, faux roots, it's how you place the hair on the head. So I work with the hair designer to, um, you know, place the hair, how it's rooted, how it's sewn. Doll hair is put onto a head with a sewing machine where instead of the needle going down like a fabric sewing machine, it goes up through the head and it's locked with um, a, a knotted pattern on the inside of the head. Thanks. And then um, I think the other thing too about being a hair designer at Mattel is it's not just making it look beautiful, like the, the one prototype that you make, is how can that translate into a manufacturable hairstyle that you know is done at the factory, is shipped across the world and across every consumer so that you know from the factory to whenever that consumer gets it, wherever they are, that it still looks you know cute and, and put together. So um, that's like the capacity that, that we would work with a hair. That's really interesting. Thank you for that. And another thing too, yes. Yeah, so one more thing is that the hair designer also has to work closely with a packaging designer too, because you know if they have long hair, it can't be loose in the package. She's going to look crazy. So how do we secure it down so that it doesn't that it doesn't ruin the hairstyle, but also still, yeah, um, survives transit too. So as a hair designer, you are working cross functionally with a bunch of different teams as well. Very cool. Awesome. Okay. Um, I, we have, uh, Christine who has been waiting patiently. Go ahead, Christine. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. So, hi, my name is Christine. Uh, my question is, um, so you've expressed, I know, um, is it Kimmy expressed that, um, she made a product and that it was brought into production and everything like that. I was wondering um, for the purpose of like, I, I own a fashion company, so I do designs and everything, um, but I also have a lot of different ideas in my head. Um, my company has to do with Adam. So a lot of ideas that are surrounding science and stuff like that and very nerdy scientific education for Barbie and for other dolls and maybe even a new one. My question is, um, who owns the rights to those at the end of the day? Do you get some royalty or does Mattel own it or do they give you some portion or how does that work? Actually, anything that you design at Mattel is owned by Mattel. It's our intellectual property. Yep. Um, there is a whole world of inventing toys that you could look into. Um, go ahead and Google that where people pitch ideas from the outside to companies and then we'll buy it or option it. So external inventors will get paid a royalty. But when you're in Mattel, like everyone's an inventor here, we all work together. We all invent things all day long. So um, it's owned by Mattel and then you get paid a really great salary. <laughs> awesome, thank you for that. And then we have uh, Melody. Melody, go ahead, ask your question. Hi, um, so one thing that really stood out to me was when, um, you were mentioning uh, two things, actually, the model shop and also um, the soft good pattern making. I was just curious, um, who does who gets to have access to the model shop like in Mattel? Um, does anyone have access to like come up with ideas and use the model shop? And also um, for the pattern making for the Barbie and the doll specifically, what scale do you pattern make at? Um, I can answer those unless anyone wants to jump in. Um, Carlisle also has lots of experience with the, is it the one six scale with Barbie? Um, so for the model shop, anyone could use it. We have a, what's called a work order system. Um, back in the day when everything was non-COVID, you just run down there, you talk to one of your um, favorite model makers, you show them what you're thinking. Um, sometimes you brainstorm with them a little bit and then you give them your idea a rough sketch or more specifics. And then we have to put in sort of a work order, which is a computer system that we have and they'll work with us. And the model shop works with everyone in the company. They'll even work with Fisher Price, which is in New York can send stuff to our model shop and then we'll mail it back to them. The same with the hair recruiters. Um, and the soft goods is kind of the same. There's like a, Mattel's a really big building and there's just little sections where everybody sits. So there's like a whole row, all these people with sewing machines, um, 
working. There's probably 20 soft goods people. And we'll, that's part of the graphic design process, actually. If Jen Day can talk to the scale. So they'll make like a muslin. You guys know that because you're fashion students, right? So they'll first do the fit and the pattern. They'll make a muslin. Then they'll turn the pattern over to Jen Day or a graphics person. And then like Carlyle showed you in one of his um, slides, we might print it out in paper and put it on the doll to see the scale. So for Barbie, it's one six scale for um, like a little mommy or a baby doll. It's a little bit bigger. The dolls are maybe 18 inches or 12 inches tall. So you just have to kind of figure it out by printing it out or comparing it to other things that you've done before. Um, did that cover it? Jenday, did you have anything to add to that? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I so uh, I don't. Oh, go ahead, Carla. Add to that, you know, we're not, it's like, you know, in the human fashion industry, you have standard sizes, which are of course different with every company, but for us, you know, your our seamstresses and pattern makers, they're draping directly on a Barbie body, whatever Barbie body or doll body that we're using. So it's, um, you know, we don't have like a set number or set scale. Barbie in general is one six scale too, but you know, you could be draping for like Barbie's little sister, Chelsea, who's like this tall or her. Barbie's 11 and a half inches too, and then all the different body types too. So you're draping directly on the dome. That's what our seamstresses and pattern makers are, you know, masters at. That's amazing. Okay, so I, I know we said that those were our last questions. So I have to ask Mattel if, if, they, if they are willing to take Miranda and Lisa, Lisa. Moss's question, and then, um, and of course, Professor Lori Ivis, um, and then, and that's it. No more. <laughs> I, I could stay till my son burst back through the door. He went for a walk with his, <laughs> his neighbor friends. So yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, okay. a few more minutes. All right, Lori, did you want to go first? I was just going to ask. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm just looking at my students that are here. They are so talented. You said one or two internships. If there's some that are really close or that you see they're so talented, would they have a chance for maybe the next go round? Or if there's an uh, opening, you know, some other internship situ internship situation, would they be kind of like put on the the good list or something, or is it just, it's cut and dry, one or two, boom, and then just wait till the next round. Is that clear? Or? I mean, I think it would depend on, you know, A, if, if next year, cause we, we do internships usually once a year. So if they're, you know, next fall, still a student, still eligible, um, you know, then could definitely reapply. Um, you know, we do, we do, pipeline students sometimes. So if for some reason, you know, something didn't work out for whatever year or they weren't eligible, um, you know, then we may look at them in the future. Great, thank you so much. Okay, Miranda, you're up. <laughs> oh, you got unmute. Oh, okay. Thank you so much um, for today. It was inspiring and for taking us um, after the the time, um, I think like the electrical at my house went out and I, my hands got lost in the transaction of reconnecting. But anyway, I just wanted to say, Cariel, if I said your name correctly, um, what you presented today was so inspiring. It had me in tears um, just from the work that you did um, as far the the fashion work that you did when you've lost all the weight, like that was just amazing. Like, I mean, I still get it, you know? <laughs> that was amazing. Um, my, my, my eye watch said your, your blood pressure or something is, your heart rate is, like you inspired me today, really. But Thank anyway, um, yeah, this was so inspiring because it, it put me in a place of me growing up in the 90s with Baby Alive, you know, she used to poop back in the day um the poly pockets um just all the things that you guys are working on I I don't come from a fashion background but I I love fashion I've always been um intrigued by it um and my question is because I'm moving into the interaction design I'm self-taught in graphic design I know illustrator I know adobe um all of the creative suites and I see that you guys work with grids and Cariel I wanted to know 
with your prints that you do, you, you work with so many different prints um, in the, the cultural areas. Do you work with grids? Um, I wanted to ask also um, the length of the internship. It starts in September. And when is this a three month internship? Um, and I think that was, you know, I, I have so many notes, but I think that's the, the questions that I'm just going to throw at you guys today. Thanks, Miranda. Yeah, it's Carlisle. My name's pronounced Carlisle. And if you guys, if anyone here to you, feel free to connect with me on Instagram to just send me a DM, DM if you have any questions that you think of later. Um, what did you mean by grids in terms of prints? Yeah, and pattern making and um, some, some of the work that I saw today, I could see, I can see grids. And I wanted to know, do you work with them when you deal with different prints? or I don't know your design process of working with the different prints it depends like that one the Mutia Barbie was a grid you know it was squares but we have you know more organic prints we have prints that are um you know kind of like watercolory too and Jinday can speak more to this too but we have a variety of prints depending on what the um what the project is too and you kind of touched on um cultural prints too like I didn't have to do any research I'm Filipino so I know what I'm talking about but for anything else, like, you know, when we work with, especially um, we have this line called Inspiring Women where it's, you know, we, we do dolls of, you know, iconic, you know, um, women, groundbreaking women throughout history. So we work with their foundations. So we always try to work with somebody that, you know, can approve that we're in the right direction too. So we always um, make sure that we're not just, you know, pulling it out of the air. And then I think her, her other question was the length of the internship. Yes, so the fall? September to December. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Julia, you're up. <laughs> Julia, we can't hear you. I don't know if you're having an audio issue. Uh oh. Do you want to move to Lisa? Okay. Oh, Julia, are you there? Yeah, Julia, you can you can you can message me later. I know you have my email. You can message me later. We'll get your question answered. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, okay, we will we will take it home with um, my colleague Lisa Moss. So I'm not sure if this is a question or a statement, but go for it, Lisa. <laughs> Uh, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? I'm so sorry. It said in, initially that the host has to unmute me, so I was waiting for you to unmute me. So you guys can hear me okay? Thumbs up. Wonderful. Okay, um, I just have a quick comment. The international students had asked the question if they are required to receive academic credit. The answer to that is yes. If you're an international student, it's mandatory that you receive academic credit for both paid and unpaid internships. So please go through the International Education Center to make sure you qualify to do an internship before you apply. Um, that was my comment. Um, and I just want to thank Mattel again for coming. This was a wonderful presentation. I'm part of the team, the career services team, and I work with the internship program. So I just wanted to clarify to make sure that the international F1 international students know that they are governed by Homeland Security and it is mandatory that they receive academic credit for both paid and unpaid internships. So thank you all for the time. That's all I'm gonna take. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was going to be important to unmute you, Lisa. I was like, I said something wrong. And Lisa has her hand up. I said something wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, let me just make sure these international students know that right. they've got to do internships. But it's a wonderful opportunity. And I really hope that, that they are yeah. the opportunity. And Lisa, we might as well just say they have to have been here two semest full semesters before they can apply as well for an internship, right? So. Well, it kind of depends. Um, if uh, they are allowed to transfer units from other schools, as ah, well. oh the my goodness, it's a little different. But uh, please just go through the International Education Center, and they'll yeah. give you all that wonderful information. That was like a PBS, Lisa. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> also, I wanted to add for and those of you that are lucky enough to get it. I just uh, heard from our chair, Josh Sinceri that uh, the photo end of Mattel is almost all SMC grads. 
our SMC people. It's like they were, yeah, almost all of the. Hey, our photo, our photo department. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they're great. Yeah. I did not yeah. know that. Uh, her, they uh, emailed me yesterday and he was like, maybe I they'll love have, working with us. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, make us proud. SM, make me proud SMC. I'm, we're so happy to be starting this. Hopefully it'll um, go further and you're the first students who get to uh, participate in this. So um, we're looking forward to seeing what you have and me and Jinday will be interviewing you soon. Um, I have to check out soon. So thank yeah, you so much. Too. Thank you, Carlo, uh, for joining us. He's not in our dolls team. He's in the Barbie team, but he came and well, it's one Mattel here. As we said that a lot, we all help each other out. Yeah. <laughs> We're a big Mattel family. So I uh, hope you got excited about what we do and um, toy design is a wonderful field. So look into it more and uh, we'd like to interview you soon and 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 i and i just want to again thank mattel so much they have been incredible you know see me i mean particularly our smc alum kind of driving everything and jen day inspiring us and carlisle and milan and Sima. like we're just so grateful for you and everything that you've done um, to support us and thank you all to the faculty that came to show up to support the students and thank you to the students who have come so we yeah. will send out that email to you so you know about the next event. I mean, let's not waste this opportunity to interact with such incredible, inspirational individuals, yeah. right? So we'll send that out to you and we're here to support you. So thanks everyone. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.